Hi, hey Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. I seem a little grumpy today. It's because I'm already out of coffee. <laughs> so anyway, what do you mean you don't ever be able to tell the difference? Whatever. Anyway, I want to talk about I did something I'm really excited about. I got a laser mounted on my miter saw. I'm right here at my miter saw station to show you what it looks like. But it's got a laser on it that I put on this thing. This is an old miter saw. It's a Makita LS1011. They don't, even, they don't even make this anymore. This thing is about probably 17, 18 years old. Uh, but it's been a great saw, been accurate all this time. It's a 10 inch slider. So there's nothing elaborate about it. It is a compound miter. So I can cut the angle in two different directions at the same time. But having a laser on this, it just been I've never been able to really get a handle on doing it now I if you remember I had my small parts table that I can set on top of this thing let me put you down to see what we're talking about here so so this is my tabletop my saw blade is right here and then you take that other table <coughs> when I use the small parts table it just goes right in here the fence comes off and the bolts go in there and I fasten it down right here and I use this laser to do my cutting. And that works out okay because the blade in the miter saw always stays at 90 degrees when I'm using this table. I set my piece in here to get my angles that I want. And I have jigs I can set up to hold angles and stuff. And, you know, I did a, a video on this. So I, I probably shouldn't ramble on. And this has been a great little table. But... Most of the time, this is how it sits here. So I can just take large pieces of lumber and, and cut it, or even small pieces and do delicate cuts most of the time. But without a laser, lining up and everything has always been more of a challenge, as you know. So I finally got a laser for it. First thing, let's talk about the laser that I used. I did a video on this uh, a couple of months ago, probably. And I'll leave a link to where I got this stuff in this one. So you can find this if you want. This is a, just a bullet laser. It's a line mark. So it's just one straight line. You can get these with a crosshair instead if you want. But between this and the other thing I bought was a little battery box. It holds three AAAs inside. And it has an on and off switch right here to turn it on and off. So... Your power source and your switch is all right here. So you solder these two things together, put some batteries in it, and you have a quick, easy laser that turns on and off, just like this one. But you have a little bit more flexibility with this setup. Also, these batteries will probably last 50 to 1 to the batteries in this thing. This has those three little round batteries that it runs on. Uh... And the laser runs on 3 to 5 volts. So 3 AAA batteries at 1.5 volts each gives you 4.5 volts. So it runs real well. It does real well. And like I said, I suspect you'll get tons of hours out of it in comparison because of that. So that's the equipment. Now, I only paid about 8 bucks for this between the two pieces. So you're not even talking about a lot of money here to do this. Um, but to do it... You have to make sure that no matter where you put your fence and you adjust it to a zero clearance, that you still have your laser line. So the biggest challenge to putting a laser on here and on any miter saw is in order for that laser to completely line up with that blade all the time, you got to find a space back here that moves when the blade moves and that it stays in alignment with the blade. So you find that place back here in space and then you figure out how to put a bracket in here so that you can put the bullet into the bracket and hold it right there where that laser would be if you would hand hold it back here to get this laser line. So now, when I turn the laser on, I have my laser line, and sometimes I have to go in here and actually line it up just to turn it, because when you turn it, it takes that line and it moves it. Uh, so to keep it in line with here, I have to make sure that it's turned. So as long as it's shining down in this groove where the blade travels, this blade travels in here, 
and this light is in there. So that means that now I am lined up. Plus, even if I go to zero clearance on my saw, I still, the light comes through because of the width of the blade is wide enough for that light to come through and I can still see my cut line. And the beauty of this is that even if I turn, my cut line is still showing up on the angle, whatever angle I put it at. And that same thing holds true for even the bevel cutting. It holds that, it tells me where this cut line is going to come out on the laser, even if I tip it. So, placement of that laser is the key. Using these two components, you can make one very easily simple and then be able to put it in place and use it here. The only drawback to this is I wish it had an auto off on it, but I couldn't really see anything along that line um, that I could build into it. So just to keep it simple, but this will still work. And like I said, I think this thing will go for hours upon hours if you accidentally left it on. So it's not a big deal. So let's take it off real quick. Because I know you have some questions about, well, how did I actually do it? On this one, I actually went in the back. Let me drop this locket. So I went back here, and this is the bracket. This is the little box with the batteries in it. And they can take that in and out. So, But I have two bolts right here. I drilled two holes. That's all I had to do. The bracket comes over to here, comes down, and comes back. So it's kind of C-shaped. And the laser is in the bottom part, and the mounting is up here. The holes are, are drilled out extra big, so I can move this around a little bit. That helps me get it into an exact adjustment when I go to use it. And once I lock it down, it, it's going to stay put for me. So then I take it off, and let's take a look at what this thing looks like, okay? So... So I take the two bolts out, and the whole thing just slides off and out. And it doesn't look like much. I had the laser right here mounted, and the battery box sits over here on the side with the switch right there so that I can turn it on and off. Yep. I can turn it on and off uh, easily when it's in place. So see, it's just kind of C-shaped. This holds the battery right where it needs to be. Right here is my reference point on this thing where the bolts go through and it bolts it to the carriage. And so this is the part that holds it stationary. And this is the point where the laser has to sit so that it's in alignment with the blade at all times. So it's not hard to make something like this. The battery box just sits in there. So I can take it out, change the batteries out, and then gravity just holds it in place. So that's the whole thing in a nutshell. It's a great, not a bad little laser. It's probably not the best thing out there that you can use, but it ain't bad. So anyway, I now have a laser on here. I'll be able to see my cut at all the time. I'm going to love it. So uh, I wanted to share it with you. This is what I've been working on for the last couple of weeks, trying to get this thing uh, just the way I want it so it's easy to take on and off and everything and I'm happy with what it is It is a prototype May end up being the finished product too, but at this point I'm pretty happy with the way it is and it doesn't look all real bad So but once it's in place, that's all I really care about So anyway, if you have any comments any ideas Any questions about why I did what I did if you're trying to if you want to do the same thing just look down below in the description to get where to get these things. And then this is all you'll need. Like I said, about eight bucks I think I have here uh, when I bought it. So, <clears throat> other than that, just some scrap pieces of wood is all it took for me to do this. And I had to drill two holes in the top. If you look right here, at the back, on this carriage back here, the laser's right under here. Well, right here, I mounted the two bolts. And this is my reference point of the laser staying in line with the blade. This whole piece stays in alignment with it. And if I loosen it up, this moves 
in conjunction with the blade. So if I reference off of here, I can keep a blade completely in alignment with the laser. So that no matter what angle I turn it to, it'll hold that angle. So anyway, it, this works for me. If you need help trying to figure out how to where to put it on yours, and you want my want me to take a look, just you can send me pictures of it to my email address, and then at that point uh, I'll take a look at it and see if I can make some suggestions if if you want. So that's up to you. You're more than welcome. If I can help, I'd be more than happy to. So the concept is very good. I did get this idea. I've been knowing that I wanted to do this for a long time. Just haven't quite figured out how to really get it done. Until I saw Ply Woodworking, who I talked about his channel a month or two ago, too. He's a new one that has a lot of good stuff. Anyway, he took an old inexpensive, and his was not even a slider, if I remember right. And he mounted a laser just similar to the way I did this on his. And that's what really inspired me to finally get this thing mounted and get it to work. And I tell you, I'm going to love it on there. And that's going to be so awesome to have that laser for my mark. So anyway, that's it. Questions? If you need help, let me know. You can always send me pictures of yours so we can figure out how to do it. And I'll help you if I can. So in the meantime, I do want to thank you for stopping by. If you like this video, you learned something here, hit that like button. Most importantly, though, please come back again because I'm nowhere near done. Thanks. We'll see you again soon. Bye.